You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. So Brian Kelly was at uh, Rotary today and uh, said some things that uh, a lot of LSU fans would expect uh, to hear him say. Uh, can we start with number nine, please? Like, what the expectation that all we all have for the season to be? The incredible year that LSU athletics has had. And, and certainly, uh, we want to be, as it relates to football, we want to be that jump start um, and, and create that kind of environment uh, this fall. Uh, our football team is, is poised uh, to have uh, the kind of year that we all expect. He was asked about, you're talking about the year two with Kim Mulkey winning a championship, Jay Johnson winning a championship, and the year that everyone's expecting is to compete for and potentially win the national championship, and Brian Kelly thinks that this team has the leadership to do it. Leadership is hard, as we all know, and we've heard many people, and I'm sure you don't want to be bored by leadership talks today, but leadership is hard, especially when you're talking about young men that need to lead on a day-to-day -day basis. Think about trying to tell your peers things that they don't want to hear, uh, about being misunderstood and not having a chance to defend yourself, you know, having to tell somebody to make tough decisions. Those are hard things to do hard to embrace but when you're building a program you have to have great leaders they have to be willing to step out and do those things and not be popular and so those things happen behind the scenes when no one sees those things and we're making great progress as, as it relates to building those kind of leadership qualities so you've got leadership as brian kelly also said they also have culture What makes your football team are the little things that nobody sees. And that's what we've been working on for the last five and six months. So what I can report, more than anything else right now, is that our football team has the right culture. They have the right standards. And culture sometimes is a word that, that we sometimes don't define adequately. It just means that the standards that we have set in our program on a day-to-day -day basis are ones that our players are meeting and exceeding on a day-to-day -day basis because they care. So you've got leadership. You've got culture. Those are great. The intangibles are essential. Typically teams that don't have good leadership and have poor culture underachieve regardless of the amount of talent they have. You have to have those intangibles in place to match the physical ability of your team. Well, does LSU have the physical ability? I think by and large, we understand yes. Brian Kelly pointed out guys like Brian Thomas, like um, uh, Mason Smith, players that were expecting to take a big leap from last year to this year. Mason Smith obviously missed all of last year with an injury, but Players that are poised, who even played roles a year ago, ready to make a big leap. I mean, Brian Thomas, his year one and year two have basically been identical. Like his his receiving yards, year one to year two, like six yards apart, his, his total receiving yards. So players poised for a big breakout. And then some new players as well. One of the guys that Brian Kelly hired was inside linebacker Omar Spates, who came in from Oregon State. Omar Spates, who transferred in from uh, Oregon State, uh, at the middle linebacker position uh, is a guy that you're going to hear a, a lot of. Uh, he's going to, he's going to be, I think that's going to make a, a huge impact uh, on our defense. Now, one of the things we've also seen with, um, and I, I agree with him on Spates, by the way. Sp Spates has to be a 100 tackle guy this year or approach it. You know, losing Micah Baskerville, Harold Perkins moving inside. You've seen Omar Spates as, as now he's a he's a fifth year player, but he's a three year starter at Oregon State, and you know, last year he led Oregon State with eighty three tackles. He's going to have to match or exceed that this year at LSU. But we've seen Brian Kelly built you know, he built that roster last year out of the portal out of necessity. But ultimately, what you want to do is get to the point where you're not building out of the portal, where you're supplementing out of the portal. You know, we we do not want 
to make a living in the transfer portal area in terms of the depth of our program. And, and that would be, in, in my opinion, that's a bit of a red flag when you're spending that much time in the transfer portal because you, you have some holes in terms of your depth. Uh, I think what you'll see moving forward is probably um, you know, taking a few position players here and there to kind of top the tank off a little bit. Um, and I think we're probably a year away from doing that. Um, similarly is uh, LSU's week one opponent. And uh, ACC football media days are going on right now. And Mike Norvell, the head coach at Florida State, uh, took his term. And you're talking about two teams that are going to match up in Orlando in September on Labor Day weekend. And they're going to be two top 10 teams. And you're having two head coaches today in their respective towns. And, you know, of course, Brian Kelly here in Baton Rouge and ACC Media Days in Charlotte. But you've had Mike Norvell talking about his team matching expectations as well. There's nothing that we're going to hear on the outside that's going to be more than what we have inside. And that was the case a year ago because it can work both ways. Your response to every situation is dictated on what you have inside. And you know you can you can get distracted by the outside. That's very you know whether people don't think you're going to be worth a crap or people think that you're going to be the, the you know the greatest thing on earth. I mean you can you can get distracted, but it's about you know showing up every day and, and truly pushing yourself to to what we know and we believe that we can become. Um, it's interesting. Um, You got two teams that are so similar in the respect that um, they, had, they had similar regular seasons. Both were nine wins in the regular season a year ago. Both have veteran quarterbacks who made the decision to return, Jordan Travis and, and Jaden Daniels, obviously. Both have supplemented as the por in the portal, as you heard Brian Kelly say there. And then you look at Florida State with guys like uh, Johnny Wilson and Jared Verse. They've supplemented in the portal as they've, they've built you know a talented roster. Both are picked at or near the top of their, their league. Both are going to be preseason top ten. I mean, couple of teams that are sort of mirror images of each other, which is pretty fascinating that they get to start the season against each other. And you know, Florida State this year without the benefit of a week zero game, sort of a, a tune up game. Um it, it is there's a reason why I think when you look at how the odds makers have um have packaged that game, you know, with uh with LSU and Florida State in week one, why everyone's looking at that and saying, Yeah, that's that's something where you're anticipating that game's going to be really, really close. Um, for whatever it's worth, that at, at DraftKings right now, LSU is a two and a half point favorite in that game. Uh, so the the odds makers do like LSU a, a smidge better than they do Florida State in, in that football game. But you're still talking about something inside of three points. So, I think both both head coaches as they hit the practice field coming up next week. Uh, we'll have a very clearly defined goal. And it, if you're looking past week one for either of those teams, you are misguided. But Brian Kelly today at Rotary, his final sort of public meeting uh, with the media before his team reports for fall camp. And uh, Mike Norvell up there at ACC Media Days with his uh, his sort of final uh, go around the merry the media merry-go-round before Florida State reports for camp as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.